there it is, the Pixel 7a in hand. I have the C color uh, for this one. I do have a review unit coming in the snow colorway, but I figured if I was going to actually purchase one of these, I might as well go for the funky color. But that brings me to a couple of points I want to make about the design of the Pixel 7a, really all of the 8 series smartphones. I mean, these are supposed to be somewhat smaller smartphones than most of the flagship phones that you might be used to seeing on this channel. What that makes the Pixel 7a and all of the 8 series phones is it makes them kind of refreshing. And even if the design might not be ultra premium, you kind of expect that with an A-series device like this. The 6.1 inch screen is at full HD resolution, but what's nice about this display is that it actually can do 90 Hertz refresh rate for those of you that just want to have a smoother seeming experience on the daily. It's also an OLED panel, which means that the colors will be rendered quite nicely. The contrast ratios will be good as well. And finally, that always on display benefits from the fact that this is an OLED panel as well. I mean, yeah, the bezels around the display could use some shrinking, but overall, the shape of the Pixel 7a makes it one that's easy to use no matter what you might be doing on this phone. And for those of you out there who really care, this is a flat display. Again, something you would expect from a mid-range device, but then it ends up being something you wish a flagship would have more often. But as far as aesthetics are concerned, this is still a Pixel device. You still have that visor up top, which does sport a paint job that will match the specific colorway, in this case, the blue-ish that goes well with the C color. The last thing I'll point out about the build quality is that this entire phone is IP67 rated. So this first day is obviously going to include a lot of setup, a lot of installation of different applications and games that I want to use on this device. And so far the experience has been quite good. What I find pretty interesting is that the 90 Hertz refresh rate is not actually toggled on at default. You have to go into the display settings yourself and make sure that is turned on. But once that is turned on, everything just feels like smooth sailing. Everything just moves along swimmingly using that 90 Hertz refresh rate. And I wouldn't expect any less, especially since the processor in here is Google's own Tensor G2, which is supposed to be a flagship level or high-end level uh, processor uh, that powers all of Google's pixels, including the more budget-friendly A-series phones. And of course, because this is a Pixel device, you'll be getting the Pixel brand of Android. You're getting some extras on this phone uh, as opposed to everything else, which is why I don't really call it stock because some of those things just don't make it over to its competitors. Certain things like screen call or various Google Assistant enhancements, uh, the specific recorder that does a really good job of transcription thanks to the Tensor G2. And then of course, you have everything with the camera. I'm doing this particular talking head portion just hours after I bought this uh, Pixel 7a, so I still have a lot of time to check out the cameras and mess around with a few things, uh, but there are some specifications that I do want to get through at this point. Mainly that the main camera here is now a 64 megapixel shooter. There are a few reasons why that's interesting. Number one is the fact that without a zoom lens on here, you'll be relying on cropping into that sensor for all of the zooms, especially past two times. It'll be digital all the way. Even though it is a 64 megapixel shooter, uh, there's no option here to actually take full resolution 64 megapixel photos, which means that the Pixel is still relying on all of its usual tricks in order to get the best possible photos. That's not a bad thing at all. Things like pixel binning and Pixel's own software processing uh, do help to make this one of the best go-to point and shoot photography experiences in smartphones today. Which makes the Pixel 7a a wonderful deal if you want to make sure that your smartphone photography is on point. The secondary shooter is a 13 megapixel ultrawide and then the front facing camera is also a 13 megapixel shooter. When it comes to the camera modes that are available on the Pixel 7a, you might not be getting literally everything that was available on the Pixel 7 or the 7 Pro as far as software is concerned. And obviously there's not going to be a actual telephoto uh, zoom lens on here. Uh, one thing you do get in the 7a, however, is long exposure, which I have had some fun with before. And I'm gonna try my best to get a few good looking examples of what long exposure can get you. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. Uh, I feel like this phone is a bit of an indictment against a lot of the other phones that don't do 4K video on the front. This right here is 4K, and that's something that a lot of phones, even flagship phones, aren't really able to say they have uh, for whatever reason. The Pixel 7a, though, does have it. On the topic of certain features that you get on the Pixels uh, compared to other phones, even at this price point, Bluetooth microphone recording. So I'm using the front-facing camera right now with the Sony Link Buds S. It's just what I'm using for my runs at the moment uh but yeah i'm able to actually record using the audio of these earbuds the whole bluetooth mic situation also works for the rear cameras on the ultra wide right now and on the run i did also test out a couple of the stabilization modes 
normal, of course, but then I turned on the active just to see how much better that stabilization can be. When it comes to pretty much every smartphone, I'm always looking for those aha moments. And some phones don't have them. A lot of phones tend to, especially if they have special features and whatnot. But when it comes to the Pixel 3a, my aha moment was the fact that the smaller size of that phone made it easier for me to do pretty much anything else. I think I just had the same exact moment with the Pixel 7a. So lately with a lot of phones coming out, especially flagships that are sporting uh, crazy camera arrays and whatnot with one inch sensors. I've been using a lot of those particular phones and trying to use them as daily drivers. They have worked perfectly fine, but now that I have had the Pixel 7a in my pocket for this first day and I went out on one of my runs or really just one of my walks in the neighborhood, I'm really enjoying the fact that it is much lighter than any of those other phones. Does that count as an aha moment? I would say kind of, especially since I put the Pixel 7a inside of the D-brand grip case, thus adding a little bit more heft and a little bit more bulk to it, and it still was much lighter than any other phone, and it helped during those runs and walks that I just did. All right, it's the next morning. It's kind of a long day today, a lot of driving involved, so I do have to charge up the car. Uh, speaking of charging, that is one thing I wanted to mention about the Pixel 7a. Um, this one has 18 watt fast charging, which is not the worst thing, but there's definitely way better out there. Uh, one thing that has been added to the Pixel 7a, however, is wireless charging, and that is something that I used last night. Uh, that being said, for the drive, uh, it's nice that I have Android Auto on hand in order for me to charge up the phone and still get all of my functions. Uh, when I'm driving all the way to LAX. One thing I do want to mention is that while I was charging my car, I did take a meeting via Microsoft Teams. So I was using the front facing camera and I had Bluetooth earbuds in. Uh, the phone during that meeting got almost uncomfortably hot to the touch. Uh, I kind of expect that because we can't really expect that thermals are going to be amazing on a mid-range or but more budget-friendly device, but something I want to mention. This morning when I picked my folks up from the airport, it was actually pretty cold out, but now the sun is out and it's getting hotter. So I'm regretting all of my choices right now. <laughs> As I was charging the car up, uh, just popped over to a Daiso, picked up uh, one of my favorite teas. Uh, and if you have seen these in your local markets, I definitely recommend them because they're just nice and easy to grab and drink, especially when you're on the go. Uh, these are the Itoen uh, Hojicha. Now you've probably seen that they have like other green teas, uh, especially matchas and whatnot, uh, but the hojicha is actually made using roasted green tea leaves. So it has a nice sort of bolder flavor, which brings me to today's tea break, which I hope you all have a, a drink, whether it's tea or something else that you can enjoy with me while we take this moment to just sort of appreciate things a little bit and to uh, have a bit of a breather while we check out the Pixel 7a. For today's tea break, um, I want to explore the notion that perhaps all that we have is exactly all that we need. I know that in a fast-paced lifestyle like mine, but we all kind of live fast-paced lifestyles that we could find ourselves constantly comparing ourselves to other people or to the things that other people have uh, without really remembering to have gratitude or to appreciate some of the things that we might already have uh, in our lives or in the case of the Pixel 7a in our pockets. At the beginning of this year leading up until now, there were so many like high-end smartphones coming out with crazy specs and cameras and whatnot and then the Pixel Pixel A series just sort of appears somewhere in the middle of the year around Google I.O. And all of a sudden we're reminded that, wow, uh, being able to just use something that is uh, really reliable and something that doesn't go too ham in all of the specifications, um, it's really refreshing. <laughs> and that's the reason why I called it the palate cleanser, but at the same time, it's a good reminder for all of us that, well, we don't need to spend so much, we don't necessarily need to have so much in order to actually do all of the things that we might need to do on a daily basis. I think the Pixel 7a is a wonderful example of that and something that I am really enjoying right now, especially as I walk around the Arboretum. There might be a few things that might be missing in the Pixel 7a that we would want from some other devices, uh, but overall the usability is still at an all-time high. That's what you would expect from a Pixel, especially with all of the assistant tools. Uh, and even with the cameras, I'm still enjoying the photos and even the videos that I'm getting out of it, even if it's not the most powerful set out there. So to end this tea break, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you the question I always ask, which is, what's going on everybody? Let me know how you're doing in the comment sections down below, and you know what? Let me know uh, what reminders you have in your life that all you have is all you need. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, finally back home after getting my steps in and look what arrived on my doorstep. Here is the white version of the Pixel 7a, my actual review unit.
There, you got two unboxings in one. Yes, I bought the C version of the Pixel 7e so I could get started with this video right away, but this is my actual review unit and it comes in this snow color, which I actually think I really like. And as per usual in this day one format, it's a little bit disjointed, but I just kind of want to bring you my raw feelings as I'm using the phone for the very first day. And you know what, for a phone like the Pixel 7a, uh, the story is pretty easy to get even in the first 24 hours. You know that this is going to be a good Pixel device given that the specifications include Google's Tensor G2. Uh, and you know that the camera experience is going to be quite good as well, especially for photography. Now, to be fair, this phone is not necessarily super budget friendly. It is $50 more than the Pixel 6a was and it only puts it a hundred dollars less than the pixel 7 which is of course still on sale and could actually have discounted prices if you just look out for them over on the internet but for anybody that wants something maybe a little bit fresh the pixel 7a is obviously just hot off the shelves and it is a really good value smartphone for 499 dollars one of the reasons why it was easy for me to just go ahead and pick it up myself so i can get started on this video and honestly while there are concessions made by google in order to even create the a serious smartphones, I do think that for most people, this phone is going to be a pretty great time. But that's just day one with the Pixel 7a. I will have plenty more to say about this device as I use it a little bit more long term over the next number of weeks. And I will probably actually bring back comparisons uh, with other smartphones, especially around the same price point. Right off the top of my head, I'm thinking of, well, the Pixel 7 or the Samsung Galaxy A54 uh, or even the Galaxy S23, even if that one might be two or $300 more expensive than the A-series device. Let me know if you want to see comparisons and verses actually appear here on the channel. It's been a long time since I've ever done one. Uh, but also, let me know what you think of the Pixel 7a in general in the comment sections down below. Uh, with all of that said though, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for kicking it with me today on this day one with the Pixel 7a. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea everybody.